Hi there, this is Jenny from Teach Me GIS. I wanted to take a minute to make sure everyone understands the difference between display filters and definition queries in ArcGIS Pro. And the purpose of both are to get certain bits of your data to stand out, right? Certain features within a single feature class to stand out. So here you can see I have an annual crime from 2016 data set. This is for Austin, Texas. And what I would like to do is I'm trying to figure out how many murders there were in Austin. I know that's kind of a rough topic, but it is something that, that we need to know. We want to see where the violent crime is, right? So I, I do see there are some murders here, and I can see a couple of them, one, two, three, four, maybe five, six, maybe another one over there. I can't see all of them, I don't think, because they're being covered up by all these other different crime types. Now, I, I know the data, so I know there are about 30 murders, but let's check. What if you didn't know the data and you want to really know, am I seeing all of them here? Well, one thing you can do first is you can just do a frequency on this data set. So I'm going to open attribute table, and there's a column here that shows the offense type. So I'm going to run a frequency on that. A frequency is simply a count of how many times a, a, a particular data value occurred in a table. It's called frequency. It's in the analysis tools if you're looking for it in toolbox analysis and statistics and frequency. It's very much like the summarize or summary statistics, except that you don't have to pick a statistic like a sum or a min or a max. All you need to do is tell it the name of your input table and tell it what column you're trying to count up. I'm trying to count up this offense description. This is going to be my output table. It's going to go into my default geodatabase. And again, I don't need to pick any statistics fields. So I'm just going to say run. And so my new little table gets created. It's down here. If I open that table, I get a count of how many of each different types of crime occurred. And if I scroll down to murder, yeah, there should have been 30 recorded. There were 30 recorded that year, so I should be seeing 30 on the map. I don't think I'm seeing that many. So what I'm going to do is try to make them stand out. And we can do that by controlling the drawing order of these dots and having the murders draw last so they end up on the top, giving them the higher priority. And the way you do this is you just um, highlight the layer you're trying to work on and go to Feature Layer. And in Feature Layer, you can go to um, Symbology. And in here where you've created a unique value legend, just go over this button right here called Symbol Layer Drawing. And in this Symbol Layer Drawing, you can turn on Symbol Layer Order. I played with this earlier, so murder was already at the top, but originally it was down here alphabetical, right? So once I turned on symbol layer drawing, then I just took murder and pushed it way to the top, giving it the highest priority and, and meaning it draws last. And so now all those red dots are brought up to the top of the map. So that's symbol layer drawing, and that's fine. That helps me pull out or bring to the top a prime type I'm most interested in. But you can also just filter those points out. What I mean is if I go over here to this little funnel, this is for display filters. And under display filters, you can create a new display filter. Now I've already got one. Sorry, let me remove it. <laughs> So I can go in here. I can say, I'd like to make a new display filter, please. Display filters can be done by scale, where you could say, you know, if I zoom out, only show murders. If I zoom in, show something else. But no, but that's not what I want to do. I want to create a manual display filter where I just choose which crime type I'm interested in. So I'll set the crime type equal to murder. And now I'm seeing only murder. See, there's the 30 of them. I really could have picked a more pleasant subject for this video, couldn't I have? Um. Anyway, we're here, so we're just going to keep going. If I turn off the filter, I can see them all again. Um. 
All right, so I'm going to turn it back on. Now, this looks very much like a definition query, if you've seen those before. If you haven't, I'm going to show you what they are in a minute. But the thing about this is this is just a graphic filter. I mean, if I open the attribute table, I've still got all the different crime types in the attribute table. See, 36,000 something crimes. So it's not filtering the data that we have to work with or analyze. It's only filtering the display. So I'll turn that off. And this time I'll build a definition query. If I go over here, properties on the layer, and instead build a definition query. Again, I've already got one, sorry. Uh, I'll, I'll build a definition query this time where the uh, offense type is equal to, and by the way, you can stretch this out, right? Stretch this out. You can choose from this drop down. You can type an M so it jumps down to the M's. So now this, this is a definition query. It defines what shows up on your map and is accessible for you to work with. So it, it again shows only murder. The difference this time is that if I go to open the attribute table, now I'm seeing only the 30 records. See, all the others are gone. Of course, they're not permanently deleted from this data set. I can go anytime I want to data, turn off that murder query, and I get back to all the data again. Right? It's a temporary. The definition query is just a temporary filter on the data. You can turn it on and off through the layer properties, or you can turn it on and off through the data ribbon up here. And notice you can create multiple definition queries. So if I go back into the properties, and I'll just rename this one and call it murder so we'll remember. And then I'll make a new one. And I'll make this one maybe um, a little bit different. Let's say I want to select all of the uh, crimes that occurred in a particular council district. So I don't have the names of the council districts, but we're going to just pick council district 10. So I'll rename this one council district 10 crimes. So that'd be all types of crimes, but only if they occurred in, occurred in council district 10, see? So I can have many different filters to let me parse out my data into smaller chunks. And these definition queries not only filter the graphics, but also filter the data in the attribute table, right? So now I'm looking at 1,510 crimes that occurred in that council district. And again, the definition queries can be switched up here. I'm in the data ribbon. All right, so what did we see? We saw how to simply go into symbology and create um, sorry, do symbol layer drawing and push the most important stuff up at the top so it draws last and it's more visible on the map. We saw how to go to display filters and actually build a query to display only certain features on the map from this layer, but it didn't filter the table. Then we saw how to open the, the layer properties and build a definition query that is kind of a more solid filter on the data. All right, but the cool thing about all of these is that they're all stored with your project and reapplied to the data every time you open your project. So if your crime data is changing overnight or over the weekend, you come in, you open your project fresh in the morning, your display filter or your definition query is reapplied to the data so you see the new crime data according to your filters. Anyway, just wanted to make sure you knew all about that. If you want to learn more about making better maps, check out the Making Better Maps class, which you'll find on the Teach Me GIS website. Our classes are offered in person and remotely. Check out our website. Just go to our classes. It's all the different ArcGIS Pro and ArcGIS Online and Vertigis courses that we have to offer. Thanks for listening. I hope to see you in a class soon.